Donald Trump, quite a character, wouldn't you say? He's been a mainstream star since like forever ago, and then he made a run for president and won, and everybody was shocked. And based on the economy, he hasn't done too badly. But now, he might be in trouble. The economy isn't as strong as it once was, tons of people are getting sick, and the nation's in turmoil, at least in major cities, and not all of that's his fault. And here we are in an election year. Many polls have him losing the election. Some people believe the polls, and they're thrilled. Others aren't so sure, and they think he's got a shot at another term. The question is, which states are going to vote for Trump this year, and which ones won't? So let's toss out all the numbers and speculation. We're going to get into our time machine and visit all the states that voted for Trump in 2020, and the ones that didn't. Come on! No one likes Trump in the bluest states, but he thinks that he can win the race. This November, we'll remember the 2020 of Donald Trump, Donald Trump. Ah, November. It's been a long election campaign filled with empty promises, lies, and drama on both sides. In the first half of this video, we're going to stop by polling locations in states that Trump won easily. Then we'll visit states that he lost. And along the way, we'll briefly stop by some battleground states and check in and see how things are going, where every single vote there matters. Now, where's the first stop in our time machine? Right now, we're at a polling location in the state of Oklahoma. This is Trump territory. Oklahoma only has seven electoral college votes, and that's not good news for Trump's campaign, because if you're going to win a state in a landslide, you want to win states that matter the most. But alas, you take them where you can get them. Oklahoma puts the O in GOP. G. There's a reason Trump threw his first political rally for months in the state's capital of Tulsa back in June. Oklahomans love them some Trump. They'd eat Trump for breakfast if they could. It's two-thirds white here, and white people support Trump far more than minorities do. This state is third of the nation in energy production, too. It's been since 1964 when Oklahomans voted for a Democrat, and that was Lyndon Johnson. And before that, it was 1948. Trump took two-thirds of the vote here in Oklahoma in 2016, and that was the fourth consecutive election when a Republican took the state by more than 30%. So, Trump winning Oklahoma in this election isn't really about anything he did, per se. It's more about political trends in this state as a whole. Up, up, and away! We're now in Louisiana, post-election. The volunteers look happy. They did a great job to get their residents to support a re-election campaign. Another big oil state, Louisiana was a shoe-in for Trump anyways, where he picked up a mere eight electoral college votes, but every vote counts. What's interesting about this is Louisiana is a very poor state. In fact, it's the third poorest state of all. The only two other poorest states are Arkansas and New Mexico. And Arkansas was also a shoe-in for the Republicans this year. Now, in previous elections, poor people in our inner cities have voted for Democrats to a certain point. People who earned under 15000 this year overwhelmingly voted for Biden, just as people who earned more than 200000 a year overwhelmingly voted for Trump. It seems like about the 50000 a year mark is where things are going to get interesting tonight. But what we've seen over time is that the rural poor people, those people way out in the sticks in places like Louisiana, supported Trump in a big way. That explains why Louisiana, Arkansas, West Virginia, and Indiana have voted Republican for like, ever. Okay, here we are in another polling location. Now outside of urban areas, it was going to be hard to find anybody in Kentucky who planned on voting for Biden this year. Trump picked up eight electoral college votes from the Bluegrass State this year. No surprise. I mean, look how they voted in 2016. That's Louisville, and that's Lexington. Other than that, it was a blowout then, too. Now, Eastern Kentucky was always a heavily blue region. These little teeny towns way out in the mountain regions supported the Democrats, the party of the working man, forever. But something interesting happened in 2016. Now, looking back at the map, every single county out here overwhelmingly voted for Trump. That's because Trump promised to bring back coal jobs and spoke to their hearts on issues like guns and religion. Now, they interviewed people way out in Kentucky's backwoods after that 2016 election and asked them, what's up with that? One guy said, the Democratic Party leadership in Washington has left people like us. We're no longer a priority. They call them Trump Democrats out here. And in many of these counties, Democratic voters outnumber Republican voters significantly, sometimes by margins of six to one. And a lot of these counties voted heavily blue for senatorial and congressional elections and had all supported Obama, but... Trump took two-thirds of the vote in most of rural Kentucky. 
It'll be interesting to see if that happens in other rural, traditionally Democratic areas and other states this election tonight. But for now, we have to go to our next polling location. Okay, here we are in Alabama. Now, Alabama was clearly voting for Trump this year, just like it did in 2016, when nearly two-thirds of the state supported his presidency. Again, like in Kentucky, the rural areas were hard red, while the poor inner cities were very much not. Alabama ranks fourth in the nation for the biggest gap between conservatives and liberals. Like Mississippi and Idaho, Alabama has voted for Republican presidential candidates in the last eight elections, so we knew he was going to win again in 2020. The majority of Alabamans believe the role of government is to protect the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that's Trump through and through. Some have called Alabama the Trumpiest state of all. Why does the Deep South love Trump so much? I mean, after all, right next door is Mississippi, and it was a Trump landslide there, too. Now, they talked to folks in one county in Alabama, Winston County, which voted more decisively for Trump than any other county in America, at a staggering 90%. Many rural Alabamans like Trump's non-political background. Many cited his business background. Many like his honesty. Trump's very military-friendly, and many rural counties in the South love our nation's armed forces. And many rural Southerners say the Democratic Party has moved too far to the left, people. The state with a big electoral college hall for Trump tonight was Tennessee, which gave the president 11 electoral college votes. Now as a whole, Tennessee is the seventh most conservative state in terms of percentage of voters. In 2016, 60% of the state supported Trump. And the last time the state picked Democrat was in 96 when Bill Clinton ran from right next door in Arkansas. The only people who didn't support Trump here tonight were the vastly poor areas of Memphis and the booming city of Nashville, which is quickly becoming very liberal. The state has no income tax, some of the lowest property taxes in the nation, and is a right to work state. Plus, only 5% of workers here are in unions, and conservatives like all that stuff. Now, before we move on to states that didn't vote for Trump tonight, other states that we could have talked about and visited in our time machine were the Dakotas, Kansas, Wyoming, Idaho, and Alaska. Those states only have a combined 21 electoral college votes, and we didn't have enough gas in this scene to get to all of them. But those are also the ones that Trump won tonight. Now, of course, there's a ton of Trump haters out there. Many of the states with the largest populations with big inner cities have a tradition of being very liberal. Now, let's visit some of the states with the most anti-Trump sentiment out there. The states that did not elect him tonight. Come on. Blasting off. Traveling. Ah. Oh no, we're time traveling again. Whoa, this is crazy. Ah, ah. We'll begin at a polling place in Boston, here in the state of Massachusetts. Hey, that lady was here voting earlier this morning. I smell a rat already, I tell ya. Perhaps the most liberal state in the nation, Massachusetts clearly didn't send much support to the Trump re-election bid this year. I mean, when he ran against Clinton, 75% of the state showed up to vote, and there wasn't a single county here that voted to elect Trump. Some people in Massachusetts felt Trump neglected their state during the pandemic, and he rerouted supplies to the swing states of Florida and Michigan. Plus, Trump had publicly battled with the state's governor, Charlie Baker, who was actually a Republican, over the same issue. But whether or not the president did or did not do that, it's pretty clear that there was no point in trying to win over the Massachusetts people anyway. The state hadn't picked a Republican for president since Ronnie Reagan in 1984. Talk about political infighting. Trump and New Jersey's governor, Phil Murphy, didn't see eye to eye about the pandemic response. But that didn't really matter much either. The state wasn't voting for Trump anyways. That's 14 electoral college votes going to Biden this year. I mean, for most of the summer, New Jerseyans had given Trump a 32% approval rating and the 2018 election served as a referendum on the president as 11 of the state's 12 House seats had voted blue. Now previously, it was seven to five in favor of the Democrats. So New Jersey clearly wanted no part of another Trump term. It's been all over the place historically for the Garden State. New Jersey had gone Democratic in the last seven elections after having voted for a Republican for president the previous six. This chart shows it tends to go in trends politically here. Some people had expected 2020 to be close, since it wasn't a blowout here in 2016. Trump only lost by 14 percentage points back then, but alas, he lost this state. We're going out to the Midwest right now to visit one of the only Midwest states that backed Joe Biden this year, Illinois. Of course, most of that was because of Chicago. Now, Illinois used to have much more influence in elections, but people are leaving the state in droves. Many of them are Republicans who were sick of the state's high taxes and people who were tired of Chicago for various reasons. 
Trump losing Illinois in 2020 was totally expected and wasn't even close in 2016. And it's been since Bush in 88 that Illinois backed a Republican for president. And before we leave the Midwest, it's worth noting the Missouri bellwether phenomenon. The state of Missouri has voted for the eventual winning president in all but three presidential campaigns since 1904. And right now on election night, it's looking like Missouri will vote for Trump. However, the states that are going to be far more important this election are the swing states of Arizona, North Carolina, Florida, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Those states are up for grabs, and it's way too early to know how those states will go tonight, but many are leaning towards Trump right now. It'll be interesting to talk to people as they leave the polls in these battleground states to see how they currently feel about the economy, the civil unrest, and the pandemic. But for now, let's hop in our time machine and visit our next polling location, one that's been dominated by Democratic voters forever. New York. There's no way New York was going to give its 29 electoral college votes to the incumbent this year. No way. New York has been primarily a blue state since the Great Depression and has only sided with the losing Republican once in the last hundred years. Ronald Reagan was the last Republican this state voted for. In 2016, Trump lost his home state by 22 percentage points. So tonight was no surprise. The final numbers aren't in yet, but it's looking like the Democrats' margin of victory here is smaller than it was four years ago. Maybe it's all of the civil unrest and the defunding the police, and New York City residents seem to despise both Democratic Mayor Bill de Blasio and Governor Andrew Cuomo. So it looks like once liberal voters are going with Trump more this year, who has been preaching law and order. Hey, that guy's dead. Voter fraud? Somebody call somebody and report this. And here we are in our final polling location in a state we already knew wouldn't vote for Trump tonight in this election. In fact, California will probably never vote for a Republican candidate for president ever again. In 2016, Trump lost California by more than 30 points. That was the third consecutive presidential election where the Republican candidate lost by more than 30 points. So this state alone gave Biden a huge 55 vote lead in the Electoral College. That's more than 10% of all Electoral College votes cheater. From the 1950s until Clinton in 92, California had only voted for a Democrat one time, and that was in 1964 for Lyndon B. Johnson. Of course, the growth of the Hispanic population here has helped to make California a reliably Democratic state today. I mean, the prevailing wisdom has been that Hispanics are incentivized to vote Democratic, and that all should be never Trumpers. But that simply is not true. Recent polling has suggested Trump will get about 30% of the Latino vote tonight. And if he gets 40%, he'll steal all of the battleground states. But will that happen? I mean, why would the most anti-Latino president in history get their support? Many reasons. His policies have given Latinos the lowest unemployment rates in history, pre-pandemic. Two-thirds of U.S. Hispanics are Mexicans, who tend to be swing voters. And many Mexicans don't identify with Mexico as much as you might think. They consider themselves Americans, which they are. They too don't want illegal Mexicans coming into their country. They too support law and order and low taxes. Mexicans like Trump's policies way more than you might think. So while California is clearly out of reach on this night, there might be enough support among the Mexican community and battleground states that Trump might run away with this whole thing. I think I'm gonna take the time machine ahead a few hours and see what finally happens on election night, but you, have to wait until November 3rd. Sorry, not sorry. Okay, so that's it. We dropped by the states where Trump cruised to easy wins and popped by states that Trump easily lost. This election's too close to call tonight. We saw a lot of twists and turns leading up to the election, and there's going to be a lot of election night drama ahead. So hang on for the ride, pal. Donald Trump's presidency has been quite memorable so far. It's been a long time since one candidate has polarized the nation this way. Most of the population either hates the guy or will support him no matter what he does. And most of the people on the fence will likely be looking at their bank accounts or their tolerance for civil unrest when they step into the voting booth and decide to re-elect him or not. And now some bad singing. It's Donald Trump. He's a crazy guy. He's done a lot. But is this his goodbye? Donald Trump. Many don't like him, but that's okay, because he still loves them. MAGA hats, no Democrats, orange hair, he don't care, but there's people who love him anyways.
Our president is quite a guy. This November might be goodbye. Some states love him and some states hate him. But MAGA country loves Donald Trump. Donald Trump. No one likes him in the bluest states. But he thinks that he can win the race. This November we'll remember the 2020 of Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. While we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way.